Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 14th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Microsoft's Patch Tuesday again. We got patches for 114 vulnerabilities, 19 of which are rated uh, critical. Four have been previously disclosed and one is currently already being exploited. Looking at the numbers to compare them with prior numbers, you also have to take into account that this now includes Google Chrome vulnerabilities that have been patched by Google. After all, Edge is now really just a version of Google Chrome. But probably the most interesting part of uh, this month patch Tuesday is that we have yet another set of four critical exchange vulnerabilities. The CVSS score of these vulnerabilities is 9.8 and exploitation is likely according uh, to Microsoft. Given what we just went through with Exchange, I hope everybody kept good notes and uh, can get those patches quickly rolled out. Uh, no public uh, exploit yet, as far as I know. These vulnerabilities have been reported responsibly to Microsoft, so uh, they're not aware of them already being exploited in the wild. But again, with all of the extension being spent on Exchange lately, I'm pretty sure that we will have an exploit available shortly. Now, if you are applying these Exchange patches, keep in mind you first always have to update to a supported uh, version of Exchange. So you have to first apply a cumulative update to get to a supported version. Then you apply the April patch in order to have a fully patched system. If you do have one of the supported versions of Microsoft Exchange and you hadn't yet gotten around to applying the March patches, which, well, you're really late at this point, but you only need to apply the April patch it does include all the March updates as well. Then we do also have a surprising large number of vulnerabilities in RPC services uh, that are being uh, fixed here. And uh, now it's about 20 vulnerabilities. I believe 12 of them are rated as critical. Exploitation, however, uh, less likely according to a Microsoft. Microsoft credits Wiki Chen uh, with the discovery of uh, these vulnerabilities. Not 100% sure, but I believe this is the head of the Chihu 360 security elapse and a well-accomplished bug bounty hunter. So overall, make sure you patch exchange. That's really the big, big message here. And that's where your efforts uh, should be directed at this week to make sure that you got yourself covered there. The other uh, patches look more like routine. And I hope the things like uh, Google Chrome and such, you already have that covered uh, with the automatic uh, updates. But well, we got other vulnerabilities too to talk about, not just Microsoft. And we got a nice uh, paper by Forescout. Uh, Forescout took a look at DNS implementations and they sort of appear to have started out looking at particular the uh, pointer or the compression mechanism in DNS that of course has caused numerous issues in the past. For example, about a year ago, we had this uh, big issue with Microsoft's uh, DNS server that was based around uh, these uh, pointers. Problem with compression is always that, of course, you end up taking up more memory than you initially anticipated. And uh, that appears to be in part the issue here again. But Forescout, while they were looking at these different TCP IP stacks, also found a number of other vulnerabilities. What actually surprised me is that there is basically some very basic checks that are missing. Of course, the good old problems with having no random query IDs that came up again. Also the non-random source port, of course, that's sort of an old stable when it comes to mistakes in DNS implementation. What surprised me a little bit is that some of these implementations don't validate whether or not the DNS records only contain valid characters that are actually allowed in DNS labels. The operating systems that Forescout looked at in included free BSD. I believe PFSense uses free BSD, so firewalls may be affected by 
some of this nucleus net uh, that's uh, often used in IoT style devices. They point out here also ultrasound machines, but also storage systems. NetX, uh, that's a real time operating system. Variable fitness products uh, are apparently often using NetX. As usual, one of the problems here is that it will be very difficult to patch all of uh, these IoT style devices as far as free BSD goes. Well, uh, apply the update as it arrives. There should be an update on the way. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.